right, so I was looking at my Aaron collection, Tops Run online, and saw that a lot of the uh, the pictures were out of date, and uh, decided to do some fresh scans on some of the the dated images and update the website. I haven't updated the website yet, but uh, now that I have some of these new images in place, I thought I'd share my Aaron collection. Now you might think I have a pretty good Aaron collection because I'm a um, Braves collector, and that's my focus of late. But the truth is, I, I don't. I have a pretty good command of the 50s and the 70s, but not such a good run in the 60s. And and part of that's just because I don't I don't like the cards from the 60s. But uh, I'm going to complete uh, each of those sets as a team set. So I, you know, obviously I want the best players. So I'm going to get the cards eventually. I've just been a little uh, neglectful picking them up. Uh, this is 1976 Tops. This is the last card in his uh, player run of Tops cards. Um, it's pretty well centered left to right, not so good top to bottom. And, and that's generally how I, I roll sometimes. If I'm going to go with an off-centered card, I'm going to go with it off-centered top to bottom. But uh, usually I prefer the thicker side to be the bottom rather than the top. But this one, you know, it's a five. It's deserving of that grade. It's uh, got excellent registration, excellent uh, color saturation, just not centered so great top to bottom. 1975 tops. This uh, this I have as a mini as well, but uh, I've completed this set. It's uh, it's a fun set. It's a uh, it's it's a set that I didn't care for as a child to be honest. Uh, thought it was too colorful. Thought it was too over the top, and the and the the colors that were selected, and the colors didn't really seem to correlate to the teams, and and they don't. But uh, it's one of those sets that's just simply uh, grown in in my heart over time. I just I think it's uh, one of my favorite sets today, even though it was arguably one of the least favorite sets uh, when I began collecting in 1980. 1974 tops. This is the first card in the set, and for whatever reason, they decided not to produce a regular uh, card uh, in '74. Uh, you know, like the others, and, and they created instead this all-time home run king card, uh, which always puzzled me. Uh, you know, this seems like it's a it's a lovely card. It's a nice card. Um, it, it would have been a nice card in addition to you know having a regular uh, card uh, produced as well, but they didn't. And it says he's the new all-time home run king, though if you look in the back of the card, he's, he hasn't even tied the record yet. Uh, he would do that uh, opening day weekend in Cincinnati. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, thankfully he didn't win the record, and, and uh, nothing uh, tragic happened in the, in the time uh, between there. It certainly could have. There were threats, and, uh, you know, I can't imagine what the wait must have been on him to have to wait an off season um, with some of the letters he got and some of the pressure that was on him. I can't, I can't imagine. Uh, so uh, probably one of the most important records that have ever been uh, broken. Uh, 1973 tops. This is card 100, and and you'll see that's a pattern throughout many of his cards. He's he's a round number because he was one of the most significant players in, in the game, and Tops would do that. They would, they would give them a round number. Of course, having said that, here's a not-so-round number, 299. Uh, but that's only because they made an in-action card for Hank Aaron, and they did that with some of the stars in 1972. And for whatever reason, they made the in-action card, uh, card 300, and they made the base card 299. And, you know, candidly, the action shot isn't, much of an action. It's just him trotting around the bases, presumably after a home run. 1971 tops, uh, card 400. This card has been altered. It's been trimmed according to SGC. And they're probably right. It actually seems pretty comparable to the other 71 cards I have. It doesn't seem smaller, but if you look here, you know, maybe it was trimmed. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a bias of an angle here. It's thicker here and thinner here, but of course, you know, it's also thicker here and thinner here. So uh, it could just be faulty 
uh, cutting, but uh, uh, but you know SGC looks at you know hundreds of thousands of these cards, and and uh, they probably looked at the edges and recognized something that I don't see. So they're the experts. This card is commonly altered, uh, but often it's not trimming; it's um, uh, adding color to it, uh, touching up the edges and the corners with with black ink to make it seem uh, sharper. Uh, but it's a, it's a decent copy. I've hung on to it. If I ever pass it along to someone else, uh, it will be in probably, uh, I'll, I'll probably resubmit it to SGC and have them uh, um, encapsulate it as an altered card and call out the trimming. 1968 Tops. This is a card I almost did not buy uh, because I bought it raw and I didn't like the coloring at the bottom of the card. Uh, it kind of had a reddish orange hue to it. You can you probably notice that in the scan. Uh, but it, as I looked at some of the other cards online, it, it doesn't seem to be terribly uncommon for this card. Uh, it's not universal. I don't think it's on every card, but uh, I think many of the uh, examples have that sort of discoloring. Otherwise, I thought it looked really, really fantastic, and um, you know, was obviously delighted when it when it came back as a seven and a half. Because candidly, I think I. I overpaid for the card as a raw card um, simply because I, I just really thought it looked good and uh, obviously SGC agreed uh, 1962 tops that's you know we've obviously skipped over some cards I've got a pretty significant gap in my collection in the 60s and uh, this card though it's a five you know honestly it reads much better in person uh, you know the challenge with these wood grain cards is the, is the corners and edges. You know they show their wear, even if they've only been you know lightly touched with with some wear. It's it's very easy to, to pick up. So I think this is actually a you know a really outstanding example of this card. It looks fantastic. Uh, it feels more like a, a six or a seven in person. Uh, Nineteen sixty. This is a card uh, that I had in my collection and got graded. It was one of the first cards I ever did get graded. Uh, and it came back a five, which, you know, it's a really super grade. I think what held this card back was the centering left to right and top to bottom. And, you know, 1960 is a challenge to get centered cards. 1959 tops. Uh, this is actually a card I bought graded and uh, cracked the case because I, I have a complete set of 1959 cards. Uh, as a matter of fact, it displayed on that wall right over there. I wonder if I could grab the camera and show you the wall. Anyway, uh, I wanted to display them in these um, uh, nine card frames. And uh, so there were, you know, quite a few of the Hall of Fame players that I bought as graded cards and crack them out and put them in those frames and you know I like it it's uh, not something I do by custom you, generally if it's a graded card I'll leave it graded and often I'll leave the, the raw cards raw but uh, you know if it's a significant player like Henry Aaron I may get it graded uh, but uh, really really beautiful set uh, I waffled about completing the 1959 or the 1960 set I wanted to, to finish one of them but not both, and ultimately decided to settle on the 1959 set, uh, principally because I just preferred the pictures. Don't have the 58 card. Uh, wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, it's grown on me, and it might be one of the next ones I pick up, or the 1964 tops is, is the other one that I've got my eye on. But this is uh, 1957, and uh, he seems to be batting left-handed. Of course, he was a right-handed batter. He was not a switch hitter, and if you look at his jersey you can see the fours are backwards you couldn't tell from the cap that it was backwards because an M looks the same forwards and backwards but uh, this is definitely a reverse image of uh, Aaron it's just a three but it reads a lot better than that because uh, there's not much snowing on this card and it's reasonably well centered I guess it's the the, the edges and corners that, that hold this card back Particularly when you look at the back, it's, it's really not well centered, but the, they're pretty lenient on uh, the back uh, of the cards. This is 1956 Tops. Uh, this card has probably been in an attic. It's probably been exposed to extreme 
temperatures of hot and cold. That was ha that's what's happened to this card. It's gotten darker because of that. Uh, but it it it's really uh, an excellent looking card. Otherwise, and that's why it's a four and a half. It's because it, you know most of the card exhibits higher qualities than a four. Um, I've, I've talked about this before. I don't think that's Willie May slotting. I think that's Sam Jethro, a rookie of the year, uh, Boston Brave. Um, but I've never found any um, definitive proof that it's Willie Mays or Sam Jethro. I just can't seem to find the image. And I've scoured the, the Getty uh, Images archive and just can't, I can't find any example of it. So it'd be interesting to, to find that image if I could. 1955 tops. Uh, this card is very rounded corners, and that's what's holding this card back because the, uh, the color is fantastic. The centering is pretty good, uh, particularly for 55. Uh, very similar to the 56 card, and of course it's similar to the 54 card because they used the same portrait in all three of his first seasons. Uh, of course, this is his rookie card. This is a VG3. Uh, I used to have a 4, PSA 4. Uh, sold it. Uh, took the proceeds and went with my child to Disney World and uh, had a, a fantastic trip. Afterwards, uh, I I looked and looked and, and ultimately settled on this card, uh, which ultimately ended up paying nearly what I paid for the four for just this three. But this one's a lot richer and it doesn't have a scratch on the face. Uh, the only defect on it really is this um, uh, this crease that's kind of broken the surface and and so there's a little white showing uh, there but you know as far as the image itself and the and the focus of the uh, logo uh, even the text of his name which is often uh, kind of off is pretty close you know the yellow uh, is just a touch off but I think it's a great example a little worn on the back but you know honestly most of the time it's about looking at the front of the card so this is my collection. This is the, the 1950s in the first row, the 1970s in the last row, and of course in the middle is the 1960s. And uh, you know, there, I've got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of cards from the 60s that I need to pick up. Uh, my next focus is probably going to be this 64 tops or this 58 tops. Those are the sets I'm uh, most actively, uh, well actually the 58 set is the most active Braves vintage team set I'm, I've been trying to put together. I'm a fan of the 1965 card. Uh, don't necessarily care for the 66 or 67. The 69 is sim simply the same image as 68, and of course that's because uh, the Players Association was pushing back against tops, trying to, to, to get some more uh, compensation for name image likeness because they were trying to fund a Players Association. So a lot of the stars like Hank wouldn't wouldn't pose for, for tops, so you'll see a lot of the same images in 69 that you saw in 68. The 63 card I, I really don't like absolutely despised the inset image. It was so uh, poorly trimmed that I thought it was um, demeaning of Hank Aaron, the picture. I, I thought it was just lousy work on Top's part. And uh, I've even contemplated not getting that card. But we'll see. 61 is just kind of a weird uh, pose. Am I throwing the ball? Am I holding the ball? I don't know. I'm, but, I'm, but I'm Hank Aaron. I need to be in the set. Uh, 1970 looks like he was surprised in a dugout. So that's it. That's my Hank Aaron base tops run. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll talk to you later. See ya.